message so that we also get fed with God's word. So let's introduce Grace and, and welcome her up. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Grace, and uh, this is going to be my camping trip testimony. So the camping trip was this past Monday through Wednesday, and even though it was pretty short, it was very refreshing and eye-opening. From about a week before the trip, I was already preparing my heart and looking forward to the trip. Uh, but the Sunday service after the Sunday after the Sunday service before the day we left, um, I had a bad asthma flare-up, and I let PD know that I wasn't going to make it. Um, and I took a lot of medicine, and I had some sleep, and I actually slept in until the time that people would probably be getting ready to leave the house to get to church. And then I kind of decided last minute that I was actually going to go. And I made it just in time, and I got to see all my friends, and then we were on our way. And uh, it was very different from both normal life and retreats. And because the camping trip was not as strict as a retreat, but it was just as reviving spiritually, the schedule was really flexible, and this allowed for changes to be made to have the best focus level during the sermons, and it really worked. And the disconnection part was really nice because it let us focus on the reason we were there. Disconnecting from the things that make us worry and lose focus on God is very important. Since it was one big cabin instead of multiple separated smaller cabins, it was really personal and uh, it, was, it was a lot closer since you were sleeping and worshiping and praying all together. And so every day started off early with QT, and you could either continue your daily QT program or you could ask PD for insight on passages to read and meditate on. And then after you were done with that, breakfast, everyone kind of came together and uh, made food for everyone else, and it was a really enjoyable time and there was a lot of fun, and uh, it was really a nice time. And then lunch and dinner were the same, and the food was great. And everyone already knew each other, but it was a good bonding time for everyone to get closer by making meals together, praying together, or hanging out. And the worship was very different because everything was unplugged, and everyone was in an enclosed circle. So like, unlike the rows of chairs, it was kind of in a circle format. Everyone could see each other, and everyone was really close to each other. And the praise was really different. It was, um, it really was genuine. And the lyrics really stuck out instead of just being words that you sing. And it felt really nice to be with everyone kind of just shouting the words and not caring about what we sounded like because that's something that like, I struggle with a lot is um, caring what I sound like. And that's probably the reason why it was a lot nicer there. We were closer together, and everyone was really singing their hearts out and just having a good time. And uh, the sermons were the most different from what we were used to because it, we were watching video sermons from a pastor named Paul Washer, and I really highly really like, recommend watching his sermons because it really changes your insight on how you live. And for me, the, most, the things that stood out the most were... Um, his points on salvation, ongoing sins, and misunderstood or mistaught things from the church. And he had focused on important things such as the fact that just because you prayed the prayer once or twice doesn't mean that you're saved if you keep living in your sins and ignoring what God has given you. And he also focused on the shortcomings of American Christianity and also the worldliness of Christians. And the sermons gave a different insight on Christianity and faith that I hadn't really thought about before, so it was really interesting. And bi building a close community was, I think, a really big part of the trip, and it was really easy and really relaxed, and um, there were a lot of close moments shared, uh, both fun and deep. There was uh, the weird stories of what the seventh grade guys did instead of sleeping, and there was Minu's kissing noises, <laughs> and um, there was the late night. You wanna? Okay. <laughs> um, there was the late night singing sessions, and there was uh, mafia, but there was also like the really sad but hopeful prayers for the seniors' graduations. 
Uh, and the single instant where I felt the most of God's presence was actually when Joseph played in tenderness during praise. And everyone joined in and really meditated on the lyrics and gave it their all. And uh, there was a lot of spiritual growth in a lot of people. And I felt a noticeable difference between the atmosphere of like the first prayer that we did when we got there and the last prayer we did before leaving. And for me specifically, I viewed this trip not as a spiritual high like I would as a retreat, but it was more like a spiritual boost because I feel like I've been going strong since the retreat and this was just kind of that thing I needed to like revive and like reboost my spiritual life. And it was just really great. Through all the praise, sermons, and bonding, everyone definitely grew closer to God and to each other in a natural and unforced environment without the destruction of media, siblings, schoolwork, or anything that could keep your focus away from God. Hi everyone, I'm Hyunwoo, and I'm a freshman, and I'll be talking about my camping testimony. The camping trip was a lot of fun, and I felt that we grew in fellowship by spending with time with one another, talking about our lives, praying, praising as one body in Christ together. We had lots of fun going on a hike, which had a lot of pictures, funny rocks with a big letter P, and lots of model photos from Joseph. Also, we had s'mores, sang songs, and played mafia until 2 a.m., consisting of fun and enjoyable moments like listening to the funny stories PD talked about Jurassic Park, lots of kissing noises and era era from my brother, and lots of arguing in between another while others were trying to sleep. We had lots of praise, lots of prayer, and lots of reflection about God and about each other during our camping trip. The community grew closer as we had lots of time getting to know one another and having fellowship. Having a community getting closer with one another impacted me because I felt more open and we had better worship and communion with each other. During the time, I learned many things about God from a pastor named Paul Washer, which I highly recommend, because he shares good information about Christian faith and his sermons are very informational. And hopefully you did as well. He talked about the different perspectives of faith and what it really means to be a Christian. He talks about the church and how, only, how unholy the church can get, which brings more people to come in and that creates more ungodly people into the world. Here's a quote by Paul Washer that made me think heavily about where I am in my faith. There's not only a narrow gate into heaven, but a narrow way. Many of us think that heaven is only towards that narrow gate, and we tend to stop once we think that we passed it and that we reached heaven. But there's more towards that gate that we miss. I learned from this quote that going to heaven and being a pure, faithful follower of Christ is challenging, and following his path is a way of life. Jesus taught me that going to heaven is not only to pass through that narrow gate and stop, but to continue on towards a narrow way. I learned that breaking that way of life is pretty easy to do, and you'll get disciplined by God because of it. I learned that God pulls us out of the world and sin to bring us to God himself. Paul Washer told me that cultures of the world are deadly, and they can pull you away from God and towards worldly powers. I learned that holiness is a separation from the world, and to get closer towards God and have godly ways, and we should separate ourselves to be more like Christ. Um, this Bible verse in 1 John 1, 8 to 10, it says that if we say we have no faith, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Jesus taught us that Christians have sinned, and that we always do. But when we know we have sinned, we should be sorrowful about it instead of moving on. God's promises are the best. Sin is a counterfeit plan towards the righteous plan. I learned that salvation is by faith alone by Jesus through repentance. Repenting to Christ about your failures and sin gets you closer to him. Paul Washer also talks about temptations and how we shouldn't play or think about temptations, but to flee. Uh, after the camping trip, my connection between me and Jesus became pure, as I saw that sin blinded me and I should have more godly ways. Some changes I want to implement to myself are to flee from worldly temptations to have, and to have more confession towards my sins. Some things I want everyone to take away from this testimony are to continue on that narrow path towards heaven and to not stop after the gate, and that remembering that God is pulling you away from the world and getting you closer to God himself and to recognize your sins and be sorrowful about him. Thank you.